And not God. Because he himself, he used to worship God. He himself used to eat food. He would become tired. This is not God. How did how did that sound? I mean, it's a different perspective. Yeah. yeah. But what, what what makes more sense to your heart when you hear it? That Jesus is God or Jesus is sent by God? I mean it's kind of fun. I do He's gone. I mean, son of God. Okay. What do you mean by son of God? I mean, as a Christian, yeah. the God is his father, so he did send him. Uh -huh. Send him to hell, like to give us salvation. But in the Bible, there's many sons of God, isn't there? Like the children of Israel are called the son of God. Adam is called the son of God. Yeah. So, why would that make Jesus different? Like, like for example, I have a son. I'm a human being. My son is a human being. So this is two human beings. If you believe that God, even the concept of saying God has a son, because you know the, the father is always superior to the son. And the father always comes before the son. So when you say Jesus is begotten or he came from the Father, this would mean that Jesus himself is dependent on the Father. The Father created Jesus. The Father sent Jesus. The Father commanded Jesus. So therefore, this would mean Jesus cannot be God. It makes, you think. It makes sense. Because the thing is, God has created us and you know the truth is something which the, the heart should accept. Like for example, if I told you, if, if, if we talk about someone who looks after their parents, is it good or bad? Someone they look after their parents. Do you need someone to tell you or you know it's good? Okay, if I lie to you or if I steal something from you, is it good or bad? It's bad. And everybody, their soul, recognizes it. The same way everybody's soul recognizes God is one. And he doesn't have any partners. And he, he alone deserves to be worshipped. So when you say God has a son or God is a trinity, people, they repeat it, they repeat it, they repeat it. Because their community, their church, their family told them. But I, I ask you, in your heart, can you accept it? Yeah, our God is a trinity. It makes me want to You think? Yeah. Because obviously he's God. Yeah. The same way he's created us. So yeah. he doesn't need it. I mean, it's not like he needs help, you know what I'm saying, but we are alone in this world. So he needed like messengers, uh, people to help him. Not like, need, not need. Not need, not this need, is yeah. not the word. Yeah, it's, yeah. I didn't mention No, no problem, no problem. Um, yeah, so he needs uh, like more people to spread the word. Same as you do. But, but not me. No, we would say this is for our benefit. This is our responsibility. God is in no need of us. He doesn't yes, need his no, creation. Need like, if all of us disobeyed God and rejected him, it would not decrease his, his magnitude, his status. And if all of us, we worship God, it's not going to benefit him in any way. It only benefits us. But still back to the point, can your heart accept that God has a son?
Like, perhaps because you've been told and you've been brought up as a child. But this is something which the heart can't accept. Because why does, if God is unique and He's alone, why would He have a son? If He has a son, is He still unique and alone? And is He one if He has a son? I think so. Because God is a serving God. Uh -huh. He doesn't give. I mean, the glory is all for each. By the same way, like human beings. Uh, yeah. Jesus. But you know, God is. Yeah. Sense, yeah. God is generous. Obviously, God is the most merciful, the most generous. When He has mercy on someone, when He is generous to someone, when He gives someone something, that, or when He creates something, that thing is still His creation and, and still in need of God. That thing, that thing doesn't become God. So, Jesus being created, Jesus coming into existence, Jesus bowing His face on the ground and worshipping God. He's not God. And this is not the message of Jesus. This is not the message of Noah, not the message of Abraham, not the message of Moses, not the message of Jesus, and, and not the message of the last messenger, Muhammad, peace be upon all of them. But others saw Jesus coming. Uh, sorry? So others saw Jesus coming. Yeah, we believe. they keep telling how his story goes to the people. Uh -huh. It's like God sent him. Yeah, we believe that. God sent God sent Jesus, but the, even just take this word that God sent Jesus. So who has authority? The one being sent or the sender? Who, ha, who has the power, the authority? So therefore, God has authority and power over Jesus. Can anything have power and authority over God? Therefore, Jesus is not God. It's, 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 this is very important because Jesus came and you know his message when he when he was on the earth before he was taken up people they differed about him some people mainly the Jews you know they said he was a false prophet they accused his mother of you know of a shameful deed of having a child outside marriage this is what they accused her of then the Christians, after Jesus was taken up, they began to say that he was God, or he's part of God, or the Trinity. And then you have those people who say, no, Jesus is a mighty, noble messenger, a worshipper of God, a human being sent by God. So people, they differed. So it's, it's not for someone to impose their opinion on you. But, but you need to look, you need to study. You need to study, you need to ask God for guidance, and you need to have an open heart. But I, I, I really, you know, Allah mentions in Quran, chapter 18, let me, let me read it to you. So this is uh, the Quran, which we believe is the word of God. It's not the word of Muhammad, peace be upon him, it's not the word of any Muslim scholars, only God. The angel Gabriel brought it to Muhammad, peace be upon him. He memorized it and then he taught it to those around him who wrote it down and memorized it. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he couldn't read or write. But he came with the, he was sent with the Quran. But in uh, chapter 18, in the beginning it says, all praise is due to Allah. So all praise is due to God, who sent down upon his, who has sent down upon his servant Muhammad, Muhammad, it mentions the word servant, but it's referring to the Prophet Muhammad, who was sent down upon his servant, the book, meaning the Quran. And he has not made uh, there in any deviance. So when you read the Quran, the message is very clear, very straight. He has made it straight to warn of a severe punishment from him and to give glad tidings to the believers who do righteous deeds that they will have a good reward, paradise. So the Quran has been sent down to give a warning those people who reject the truth and they reject the messengers and they reject to worship God alone, there's a warning of the hellfire. And to give that tidings, those people who accept the message, they accept uh, the message which has come, they worship God alone, they do righteous deeds, there's glad tidings of paradise. In which they will remain forever. So the hereafter is forever. 
as I'm sure you know. And then it mentions in the fourth verse, and to warn those who say that Allah has taken a son. The Quran has come down to warn those people who say that God has taken a son. Because not only the Christians, many idol worshippers, they would say angels or spirits were the sons and daughters of God. So the Christians, they caught people who came before them saying that God had sons. But Quran came down to warn them. And then the next verse, verse number five, mentions something very interesting. They have no knowledge of it. There's no knowledge that God has got a son, nor has their fathers. Grave is the word that comes out of their mouths. They speak nothing except a lie. Interesting here, the Quran mentions this word attributed or Jesus heart. All mankind, they, they know God. How does it sound? Does it make sense? God is one, is only one, but also Jesus saying something. I do believe in something. Yeah, we believe that. One Muslim, you have to believe in Jesus. You have to believe that he was sent by God, he was chosen by God, and he worshipped God. A Muslim can't be a Muslim without Jesus. A Muslim can't be a Muslim if they reject Moses. So as a Muslim, you believe in Jesus. The same way we believe in Moses. How does that sound? Thank you. Do you have any more questions or? No, you gave me. I need to finish the Bible. You know, so I have to read this. Because okay. it's always like, you have to know both of them. Uh -huh. So I think that way you can build your knowledge by your own self of me. Okay. Uh, can I make a? I hope I'm not taking too much time. Can I? Okay. I'll try and be very brief. The Quran, as most, the Quran itself, it claims to be the word of God. It claims that it is being preserved by God. It is the angel Gabriel to the last messenger. And the Quran promises it will, be, it will be preserved, and it is easy for something. And the Quran is easy to memorize. The Quran it makes all these claims, and it, and it says clearly it's the word of God, the Bible. According to the Prophet, seventy-three according to the Roman Catholics. If you read the Bible, as particularly the New Testament, which obviously talks about Jesus. Mark, Matthew, Luke and John. Nowhere do they claim that this is the word of God. Nowhere do they claim that who the authors are. Nowhere does it claim that this is inspired by you. None of the authors of the New Testament gave their name to the book. The names were added later. None of the authors of the New Testament claimed that this is the word of God or inspired by God. So I understand from your background, you would want to compare the two, but I would say they cannot be compared. Yeah. So I would say read Quran. It's not compared to, to see which one is better, which one is more about Yeah, it. yeah. It's just like knowledge, right? So, uh -huh. yeah. yeah. I, I advise you. <laughs> I try taking a lot of time. I understand. If, if you remember, <laughs> it, just remember, from your background, if you read chapter 3, mm -hmm. chapter 5, and 19. So 3, 5, 19. It talks about the birth of Jesus, the life of Jesus. Five, it addresses many issues concerning the uh, Judaism and Christianity. And chapter 19 is called uh, Maryam. It's about the, the birth of Jesus. You may forget, but three, five, and 19. Have a read. We're here every Saturday. If you have any questions, you're most welcome. Okay, thank you so well done. Thank you very much for your time. All the best.